Hey guys, Ron here, and over the years, I've made three videos where I reviewed some of the fake mon that you guys submitted to me on Twitter. I made it super clear to only submit fake mon if the artist is fine with harsh, constructive criticism. The point was to be super honest about my opinions and try my best to give helpful critiques so that my fellow fake mon artists could grow. At the end of the day, the reception from these artists was unanimously positive, even when I was wrong, because they knew my opinions came from a place of love. I was proud of how polite you guys were, so I asked my followers to once again submit fake mon for me to critique. There were like 300 submissions in one day. Literally 24 hours I made my post, I streamed my reaction so that you guys in the chat could help give advice to these artists. I looked through a great deal of fake mon and tried my best to think of what can make some of these designs a bit better or outline why some of these designs are already amazing. Keep in mind that I'll be spouting a bunch of design philosophies and art tips, but there are always exceptions to any rule established by me or Pokemon. My job is to simply inform these artists in what I believe makes for a more believable Pokemon. That's what they signed up for, so don't feel bad for them. Of course, I went through way more on the actual stream that I'm showing in this video, so make sure to subscribe and follow me on Twitter to get notified when any of my streams are live. Here's what's funny. The first one is literally Goompy. And Goompy is a professional fake mon artist, so there's nothing to critique, especially since he did Ultra Beasts. It's, that's not only harder, but it's like, it's a specific niche of Pokemon. If you nail that look, you did it. You, you, there's literally nothing to critique about these. <laughs> I don't even know why Goompy submitted. What am I gonna say? Yeah, this, this is better than my stuff. I'm like, go check out Goompy. What if Poipo was part of a starter trio? Cause they are supposed to be common. Chris Farias. This is rendered better than anything I can do. I would like to, like the shading is really good here. Sometimes you just can help when it comes to the progression in, a, in an evolution. Like as designed separately, these are all really good. Not gonna lie, it's very hard to tell the face. I know it's that's kind of the point. It's supposed to be like drooping. It's a little hard to tell what the expression is of this object mon. When all of them have like very easy to read expressions and then the last one is like, it's not like a problem, especially if that's the point. How about these three? I cannot pronounce this. Stigipticus. I had, I just, in the video, I just skipped to when I pronounced it correctly. It took me three hours. It took me legitimately longer than any fake mine I've ever tried to pronounce. Great art. I'm not gonna critique like art. It's more how to make a fake mine. Spinike here has the literal proportions of a real life dinosaur. That could be okay for an evolution, even though that's not, oh, it's rarely okay to have the exact same proportions of the real life version, except especially if it's a very complicated and giant creature and not a legendary. Like if it's a legendary, maybe you definitely want to make sure that it's stylized in some way. So I'd say just chibify it, make the head bigger, bigger eyes, make it cuter. If you were just to isolate the head of this dinosaur and put it next to this dinosaur, they're both just adult T-Rexes. Every Pokemon has a gimmick or a thing that makes it a Pokemon, uh, an aspect that you should focus on. Look at Tyrantrum, not the exact proportions of a, dino of a dinosaur, it's very aquatic, like design-wise, because it's based on a Spinosaurus, but it has nothing to do with water, I assume. You may have wanted to make these fins make sense with its typing. Some fake mon artists would now make that into a rock, like a rock fin, while right now it's just a fin for the sake of the fact that it's based on a Spinosaurus. When you look at it, a person who is really good at understanding Pokemon should be able to understand why each aspect is there and it shouldn't just be there for decoration. So for example, look at Tyrantrum's aspects. It has this crest, it has this fluff, it has this fluff. They're not just there for the sake of being there. This crest represents a crown. These represent the robes and cape of a monarch. Even the beard is the beard of a king. Carvenkent. At least this one, you see, this one has more of a gimmick, I say, because um, as a bird of terror, it has like this steel cleaver beak. So there's more of like a concept. You have part of the head and the neck that's empty. If you just took up some space in the head by making the eyes bigger, the eye bigger, I'd say that would fix it. The pose is good. Oh, that's really good. Sheesh. I'm not even gonna say anything. That's just, look at that. It makes sense. Jagged rock, looking pixelated. Miss Jade's a lot. Again, another perfect example of the kind of designs I like to you know, critique on this series. So this is the kind of Pokemon where you simply just added to the body as it evolves. There are some Pokemon that do that, but that's always just also a flaw in the design that a lot of uh, beginner Fakemon artists do, which is that they, when they evolve the Pokemon, it's just they just add an attribute to it while everything else remains the same. This head should be less complicated than this head. That's one easy change that you could do. I'd say this is barely a Pokemon. It's just a skull, and I don't know how it exists, honestly. It's a ghost. It could be a floating skull. 
other than ghastly which is that's the concept it's gas it's not gonna have a body but ghastly haunter to gengar they are their own pokemon ghastly does not look like gengar gengar does not look like haunter they have their own appeal if the entire evolutionary line is the same exact design you would want to at least change the color starters are easy because you have a lot of the uh, starters are starters are hard and easy at the same time it's easy because you have a lot of reference we have a lot of starters we know what a starter looks like but that also means that it's hard to mimic because there's very much a look to a starter if you don't nail that look it just doesn't look like a starter it could be a successful fake mon but it may not be a successful starter but these are actually better than the average let's look at them these eyes are too close to the top starters almost always have big foreheads big heads you want to lower those eyes so that this guy looks like a baby all of them should look like babies that you want to protect he has a big jaw he does not have a big head see he doesn't even have a jaw my guy my guy does not even have a jaw i mean he doesn't have like a chin that's my point you see it becomes more prominent as it evolves you don't want a huge masculine jaw on a baby starters should have exaggerated features you don't want small details like this when i say save the hair for the evolve form all of them have slightly too much detail for an unevolved starter pokemon you want to exaggerate and make things big so the fake mon grows into those features as they evolve just like a kid i'd say exaggerate the hair make it fully cover the eyes so here's the main issue with the eyes is that the eyes and the face color have the same value they're both light and because of that the eyes do not pop you want the eyes to be either be darker or way brighter than this let's move on to the grass star which i think is probably the strongest because honestly the body is pretty good i'd say make the legs make them thicker give them thick thighs because again you want like big noticeable features for these starter pokemon that's probably a big part of this grasshopper's identity its legs make them big i also i'm a little bit confused about two antennas here nine talks amazing art art wise i love this style this is beautiful and even like the proportions are great too <laughs> but if you're asking honestly they're just a little bit too complicated for just average fake mon here if you're going to literally put a shark in an ice ball with spikes on a seal one of those things has to go <laughs> and you're very you like putting things inside things that are also things not only is this a thing inside of the thing but both of those things seem sentient this is a right amount of detail this is a great fake one this is a great fake one too the proportions of this are really good the proportions of everything is really good this looks amazing too but when it evolved the concept barely evolved you just evolved the silhouetted pokemon you know the metapod to butterfree a whole pokemon inside this thing is one tenth of the design then you have another pokemon who's sent you know alive in the amber that I assume it pilots. It's all great. It's a great concept. I love it. It's just, that's that's legendary type Pokemon. This is not necessary. You already have the bug inside the amber. Sometimes, yeah, you have an amazing concept and you have amazing art skills and you want to bring it to life, but do you have to bring it to life in this exact piece of art? Can it be a separate thing that you do? I don't know what this Pokemon looks like when it's not doing this power. That's the problem. It's great power, great art. Love the design, honestly. Design is great. Like the actual design, nothing really wrong with it. Unless it's always like this, and then that's maybe a little too much for a folk Pokemon, unless it was a legendary. Garnetor. Honestly, you see, this is relatively a right amount of elements. Main problem is, again, you made it too scary. Number one rule of Pokemon, you always want to have contrasting elements to balance out an, a uh, an aspect of the Pokemon. So for example, if a Pokemon is relatively scary, add something goofy to it. If it's really cool, add something that's a little awkward you want to see some kind of humanity in the pokemon this one looks like pure animal this doesn't look like a pokemon not because it's drawn bad but because there's no aspect to it that would seem like it could hang out with me chill on the couch you know even a rayquaza could cuddle up with itself on my in my living room if there was room even a garchomp could just sit with me on the couch um this one's way closer i can see this as a friend i would not do individual colors for every single leaf even see here every individual leaf is a different color you that's not a thing pokemon does see same thing with pip holland too many segments limited to nine this one you added these aspects to this fake mon like these little beads they're pretty but they're tiny every fake mon that you make you should consider how it would look as a plush as a figure, as a model in 3D, or a sprite in Generation 5, those things would not be visible in, in half of those forms of media. If you have a detail, make it visible. Same thing with the eyes. Those eyes are too small. It's like, I'm literally two feet away from it. I barely see the eyes. The eyes look good. They're pretty eyes. Like, and also every aspect of it is skinny. You want contrast in the shapes as well. Its leaves are skinny. Its horns are extremely skinny. Its eyes narrow. Its nose, nostrils relatively narrow. Its ears are narrow. You want contrast with that. You want one aspect to be big, whether it be a big bushy tail or big horns that aren't skinny or just, or like smaller horns that are thick. Change my mind, my dumb starters. This is gonna be easy. You're a good artist. Never make a Pokemon with this much detail, ever. If you're gonna have a Pokemon with a, a lot of patterns, you can have a Hippopotas with camo patterns. 
but then don't give it these patterns these patterns so many different kinds of textures like again you're a very good artist so it's like i'm gonna be straight with you i love the proportions of it honestly the head maybe could be bigger i'm a, and i like the eye I love the eye pattern. Remove half of what you see here. This one's closer to being better. It looks uncanny when you have a snake with eyes this close to each other. It looks like a human. This is literally just a cheetah standing up. This is very much the proportions of a human. Mochi berries. Uh, this is a great Pokemon. This is good too. I, I honestly cannot critique this. I also like the stylized type stuff. That's really nice. Other More people should do that. That's very nice. Hey, Samber. Hi, Ron. Would love to have you take a look at either of these if one tickles your fancy. I think some of these tickle my fancy. It does have slight furry aesthetic. I like the asymmetrical design. You should remove some of the frills. Some of the tufts of hair, I'd say streamline it a bit. Is that another arm? Is this, what am I looking at? Is that one wing? Is that just one, it's like a one winged angel kind of thing? It's the tail, the tail is the arm. It's a tail arm. Honestly, if this, if you just removed everything that's not the arm in this side of the body, the silhouette is perfect. Right now, it's very muddied because of that. It's good art. It's really good art. Every line on a Pokemon shouldn't be there just to uh, accentuate detail. It should be there to accentuate form. Torterra has, I'd say, above average amount of lines on a Pokemon. You see, it has these lines. It even has lines in the trees. Those lines aren't there to show that it has bark. Those lines aren't there to show detail. Those lines are there to show form. That line is there to show, indicate that this is the root. Same, same with this. It's supposed to indicate shape. It's not there just to add detail. There are just a lot of small details that are just never going to make it to the actual game, let's say. I see this a lot in grass-type Fakemon. There's just so many different kinds of plants here. I say pick one or two. I've never seen a Pokemon or successful Fakemon that is grass-type and has like a billion different kinds of plants, you know? Usually they pick... Pokemon just picks one and that's the concept, you know? You see, you have so many, you have flower, leaves, thorns, cactus. There are so many different kinds of things. This is a really good design element. See, you combine cactus with the spikes on a, you know, on a dinosaur. And I love the frilled lizard aspect too. Like the frilled lizard, that's a good, that's good design. Spartans, this is fantastic. Hopefully this is uh, supposed to be an above average Pokemon. This is a little too much. It's too cool for just to be an average Pokemon that runs around. I'm going to just be upfront with you, Spartans, because you're a good artist. Bigger head, legs too long. I'm just gonna quick fire, quick fire. Legendary vibes. These are legendary vibes. The fur that looks like a cloud spinning around a volcano. Awesome. But only if it's a legendary. If it's not, tone that down. I like it, but this is probably a mythical. If it's not a mythical, this is not a normal Pokemon. For the really good po artists, I'm just gonna be blunt. This is really good art. Too many flowers. Very good. Too many just small details and patterns. I'd say next time you draw fake mon, think of how it would be rendered as a sprite. And then you would notice that these extra dots are just not they're not there honey you're not drawing an animal you're not drawing a, a concept for a dragon in a movie you're drawing a pokemon every single dot has to be there for a reason nothing is wrong with the art the art is better than i could you did better art than me i really like the eyes eyes very pretty if you're asking me for proportions of a fake mon neck too big head too small it's also just an amalgamation of different like kinds of dragons and fairies and it's just like vague fairy dragon shouldn't be the concept the concept shouldn't just be that it's a rock fighting type, and then you just make a rock that with that fights. Even if it's amazing art like this, typing isn't an inspiration. It's a good concept, it's just not a good Pokemon concept. I guess, yeah, the concept can be taken further. Very fun to look at. I'd look at this every day. A sunset is pretty. A real life woman is beautiful, but does it mean that it, if I drew a, just a drawing of a woman that it's a good fake mom? Moegam. I love the colors on this, and the progression is really good. The amount of detail kind of muddies the silhouette. It's very hard to see the form of this. Yeah, I can see that I guess the fish became part of the arm. The pose is great. It's just the arms. You have to find a way to pose the arms so that the silhouette reads, reads better. Maybe even get rid of the tail. I'd say maybe even just... Yeah, I don't think you need a tail. It just has so many traits. I love the colors though. Let's give a big shout out to the colors. Perfect art. They're, this is over designed. What the hell? I can totally read it. The silhouette's really good. There's so many. This better be Zygarde level Pokemon. This better be third legendary in a trio. Moth Zygarde is really cool. When it's already complicated design, these contrasting colors just complicated a bit more. No, these are great. Great bamboo Pokemon. Final evolution is really good. The concept did not evolve. Yeah, it's normal type. And let's look at, for example, Stoutland. Lillipup. When it evolves, 
Herdier is not just a bigger lily pup. It looks like a separate dog. It has, it even looks like a separate breed. It's a, it is a separate breed. The, the fur, yeah, it doesn't just change color. It grows. So it eventually becomes Stoutland. While this, the proportions are really good. The colors are great. The concept wasn't expanded at all. It just grew. Honestly, just take out the smallest one. It just evolves. You understand it. The concept would be that it becomes cooler and more intimidating. The only difference between this and the smaller stage is that it just has different proportions. The actual concept is literally same dog, different proportions. This is clearly more of like mustachey dog, more snooty, has a cape as it evolves and becomes this heroic, big hearted, you know, Stoutland. They're all per individually perfect designs, but as a family, the progression is kind of uneventful. Music, saxophone, dinosaur. Honestly, right amount of detail. Concept is perfect. I, I don't know if this little beak is appealing. Perfect progression, perfect concept. It's amazing. It's I love this. This beak looks a little too robotic. Like maybe longer and less wide, and it reads more like a harmonica than a kazoo. But goddamn, this is if this is a pseudo legendary. Oh boy, oh boy, normal steel. Ooh, that's really good. You see, that's how you do a progression. It's not just small chef, medium chef, big chef. It slowly becomes a chef. And even the chef aspects aren't there in the beginning. Like, look at a starter Pokemon, for example. You rarely can understand where it goes to from the first stage. There's gonna be a hint, but you won't, it's hard to predict. Now, when the flame becomes a spatula, oh, it's gonna become a chef, but it's still not a chef yet until the final evolution where it is a chef. That is how you do it. I don't know what the hell's going on with the body here. Don't know what that's about. But other than that, good, good job. Do you guys know what the hell's going on in the bottom there? Those are not legs. Spilled cooking oil, maybe? That's really good. That's really good box art legendary. Oh, that's really good. We've never had a bug trio for a legendaries. That's pretty sick. Looks a little like Ben 10 aliens, but oh, really good. These patterns, they don't indicate anything to me. So like, for example, look at these patterns. These look very tribal. Eventually they become an alpha and omega. For example, on Groudon, they look like tectonic sheets and plates. Like they separate the ground. They look like cracks in the ground. They don't look like accents. They look like a big part of the design. I, maybe it's fine. If here's what's funny, the glowing accents, little known fact, kind of look like clock hands. They look like hands on the clock on Dialga. Squishy Art shows you that a great fake mon can, doesn't have to be in Sugimori style as long as they understand the proportions and philosophies of a Pokemon design. It does look a little yokai watchy. That's because it's based on a yokai, based on a kitsune, maybe with a little bit of kitsune mask. There's a purpose for every single pattern. It looks like just an art style of a different video game, which is like cool. It's a cool, cool art style. Firaga, I want that. A kiwi that evolves into an emu, that would make sense. The only real problem here is that nothing happens when it evolves. Yes, it gets bigger it gets it grows up concept wise it's literally just the same thing it's bird with kiwi aesthetic it gains a flower but how does that change the concept how does that change its existence this one's also way more it's incredibly redundant because it has literally everything that this pokemon has except for a few extra patterns and leaves you want to make sure that every pokemon in the line has a concept has a reason for existing and being someone's favorite pokemon this is pretty this is pretty good though like i would say this is I, there's no critiques for this. Say hello to water type Shork and its evol evolutions, the water ghost type Fangtum. Honestly, this is a good example of progression. They're not like the same exact design, just grown up. It gains the skull and becomes more ghostly with you know, even ghost fish. I'd say this is a great design. These are all a little unnecessary. <laughs> These are like flakes. They don't invoke like ghostly ectoplasm. All the design elements are good. All, redesign this every year of your life and slowly, eventually you become like literally a perfect Pokemon. Cool. They don't share any attribute other than this slime here. Yeah, it's obviously this is coming out of the cauldron, but the cauldrons look completely different. Every, like the eyes, the mouth, the blush, everything's completely different when it evolves. But I'd say keep one of those things the same, like the eye or the mouth in the evolved form. I'd say this crack is barely visible. And again, every detail matters. Thank you, SMG. It's got to work as a sprite, like you guys are saying. It has to work as a plush. It has to work as a model. You, yeah, you, it would be impossible to even put this crack on the sprite unless it was way bigger. Pokemon designs are blatant. You need to show every bit, nothing hidden. Why is the cauldron blushing? I would make it a pattern that is reminiscent of blush or part of the goo. You have to be, I guess, clever with these kinds of things sometimes. If, a, if, an, if you're making like a cat Pokemon and you want it, give it clothes, 
don't literally just give it clothes, give it a pattern or fur that is reminiscent of clothes. So same thing with this. If you're gonna give a cauldron blush, you're not just gonna literally put a blush on it, you know? You're not gonna just make it blush. You can even make a crack that is in, in the pattern of the blush. You also have so many different kinds of textures here, and you wanna keep them relatively more cohesive. Obviously, this is not the real eyes, but you have eyes and mouth, so you can, again, make it so that the eyes are carved into the, the, the cauldron, and so are the cheeks and the mouth. These are really good. Why is the pre-evolved form taller than the evolved form? Make this way smaller and this would be a really good fire starter. A little, a little too detailed for a middle stage in terms of like the amount of triangle patterns. It's not a flaw. It really isn't a flaw. That would be a nitpick. The fire though, the flames are a little too wavy. The amount of like twists and turns here. Look at Infernape. The flame is very streamlined. Look, these are practically like globs. The only, only, only real thing other than that is that when it evolves, it's very predictable in terms of what it's gonna become. It does kind of just grow up. Nothing really changed here when it evolved from the middle stage to the evolved form. It just, again, just got bigger and it got, and the eyebrows became fire. Embor, when it, when it evolves, it goes from just fire pig to wrestler pig to like general. This is just fire cow, anger, fire cow, still angry fire cow. Like in Trico to Groval too. Trico is just straight up a gecko while Groval, yeah, you can say it's a gecko with leaves just like Trico. But again, this one's way more, way different in terms of the inspiration. This is more dinosaur-like, and then Sceptile is full-on just walking dinosaur, basically. You can boil down into everything and say, yeah, Torchic is a fire chicken, then Combuskin's a fire chicken, and then Blaziken's a fire chicken, but realistically, they are not. Torchic, when it evolves into Combuskin, it becomes now a fighting chicken, you know? It becomes a cockfighter, and then Blaziken, full-on, is like a master martial artist with those legs. The claws become talons on the, on the arms. This is a relatively better example. See, the coat that it has becomes a way more, way more magnificent coat. It even ga gains a head, a hat, it gains the makeup-like accents when it evolves. Falcoshawn is one of the best in terms of the proportions uh, and making his Pokemon have the exact proportions and art style of the Pokemon. I'd say this part, the eye, is in a weird location. When it looks like this Pokemon has no forehead. Imagine this guy had a head. Like, take out the mask, where the hell is the head? That would actually be a critique. But that's an art, that's art critique, that's not a fake mom critique. There's literally just no, it doesn't have a head. This is a really good fake mom. Right amount of detail, right pr perfect proportions. I would say maybe take out one of the pair of legs. Other than that, the proportions and the amount of detail, the colors, perfect. I think the proportions of this one's really good. I think you could make him slightly shorter if you wanted to. You see these patterns on the chest? I'd say add two more of these diamonds here. If Machoke's arms were just normal arms, I think it would be too uncanny. Look at Machoke. He would literally just have human arms if these lines didn't exist. Machamp gets away with it because there's two sets of them. So it's already fantastical. Machop, it's a little kid. And it would actually be more consistent. It wouldn't look like just human skin, to skin tone hand if these patterns, just like Aang with his arrows on, on his arm, it would look really good, honestly. Each part of the body looks like a completely different animal. Adding those patterns to the arm really do help make it more cohesive. I really like the shapes that I'm seeing here. The shapes and proportions are really good. Oh yeah, I don't know why I just I noticed the axes. Take out the axes. <laughs> one of the patterns can protrude from the arm and it could be an axe. The skirt on this one, it's already giving a little too much Hitmonchan because it has the shoulder stuff and the skirt. See, shoulder stuff and skirt. And even the same body type, it even has the belt. The poses are fantastic. The art's really good. Some of your best stuff at Autumn Raptor. Chicken deer. Like in terms of just like a drawing, if, you were to, if I told you to draw a rooster deer, these are very good. Yeah, it's a really good combination, but like it's clear what parts are, do are deer and what parts are chicken. I don't understand the concept. I don't like that would be dumb for me to just ask why why'd you do this because you wanted to that's like obviously the reason to make art I think the problem is in Pokemon it's never why not unless it's why not they never just do a thing just for the sake of doing it it's always like oh because that makes sense that's a clever combination of things while this is just like let me just combine a deer with it chicken and I maybe there's a deer chicken that exists it could be hippogriff kind of I think this one is too animalistic though it doesn't look more intelligent than the average animal. That's okay when it's literally a first root, you know, Pidgey. Even a Pidove doesn't have look like it has the intelligence of an actual pigeon. You know what I'm saying? This one kind of does. So I'd maybe make it smile, make it look a little bit more intelligent, and then it would be pretty good on It would look out of place near other Pokemon because you'd be like, this one looks a little like it doesn't really know what's going on. Pigeon Chop, really good artist. This could be a legendary Pokemon. Too much detail though. Too many things going on. It's very much a Chimera Pokemon. Too complicated for a Fossil Pseudo-Legendary. Again, really good artist. Really good art. I really like the eyes. Eyes keep that. Keep the head. Make it a little bit bigger. I like everything that I'm seeing here. But then you have the arms along with the arm-like, like, like Wyvern-like 
wings. It's too ambitious. It looks like a fused Pokemon. That could be the intention, like the Galarian fossils, but right now I don't know that. I would make the top half bigger so that it fits the bottom half in terms of proportions. I would put this wing on the back. I would make, see this part of the body, you see the brown part? The same brown as the part of the wing. I wouldn't erase anything. I would just combine it in a different way. Amazing art. Amazing art. Streamline it is basically what a lot of these are going to be. If you want to see more, leave a like and subscribe and make sure to watch the videos where I actually create my own fake mon. Check the description for the t-shirts I made for you guys and my Patreon where you can get cool rewards like seeing my videos days early and discounts on my merch. You can also get the same rewards by clicking the join button and becoming a member. Follow me on Twitter and I'll see you guys very soon.